Put your hands up, freeze, ice man, not police, Bobby Drake, earthquake, leave you shaking at the knees, X Men, leave your X Men, frozen in the street. Don't keep us a secret. Pass us on. Okay, all right. Hey. To your friends. Where your friends are. Your family. <laughs> your social networking buddies. <laughs> Tell them about the great music. Great music. <laughs> With the Iceman doing it, Iceman style. Hey there, this is the Iceman. Interviews with the Iceman. I am so excited right now. We have Blake Anderson with the Ice Man. Hey, Blake, I'm honored to be a part of it. Number one song this past week on the Ice Man's Top Forty show. It, it, it very exciting. Uh, very happy to have that man because because here's the funny thing. I remember getting an email from a Blake Anderson a few weeks back saying, "Ice Man, I got a song I'd like you to hear, and maybe I can get it played on your show." And I heard the song, man, and it was just, it, it was just, it caught me, man, because, you know, just the lyrics you put into it and the music, and you know, it was just a great song. And, and when I heard it, you know, I got right back and said, man, I want to play this. And now it's number one. I know, man. I'm, I'm, I'm dumbfounded over that. I, I really am. I, you know, when it, when it first debuted, I think it hit uh, number 20, and then it got bumped to number eight, then so on and so forth, and... When it got down to this time, when it hit number one, I was like, I was listening to the top five, and I didn't hear it. It didn't hit five. I was like, oh, crap. I didn't make it this time. I was like, well, maybe it made number four. Well, it didn't make number four. <laughs> and all the way down, it got down to number two, and I was like, oh, man, I really didn't make it. <laughs> and, and there... <laughs> There it was. It came on, man. I, I, I'll tell you, I had I had tears in my eyes on that one. Man, you, you, you deserve it. And the, the thing about it, Blake, with the countdown is, and the show being picked up now internationally with syndication, and things are really starting to take off with the show. So there's a lot of people out there that when they go to my site and vote, they can hear clips of the song. So, I mean, we're being heard in different countries. So when you've got those people going to vote, you know, they're hearing, they can hear your song. They might not have heard it before. And you're garnering votes that way. And that's what makes it fun because it's just not a bunch of family and friends and even listeners that go in. There are people might, that might have not even heard of you before and, and went right. into lots of good song and, and follow it. Because like I said, I know Ireland, you know, plays the show over the weekend. And as we speak, they're hearing the top 40. So you're going to get people that hear that. Go to the site. So that's what's exciting because it's not just about getting your fans to vote. It's about picking up the newer fans and having them vote. And that's what happened. You know, the, the song has some powerful and strong lyrics. And, and it seems like it, it, of course, comes from deep inside. I, I want to know, you know, what did you, did you just put a pen to a paper one day? It sounds like some life experiences. It, tell me about the writing of the song. Uh, you know, it, it's really funny with that song. That's not one... I personally wrote uh, a friend of mine that I co-write with on all kinds of stuff. But like we we're together every week working on new stuff. Uh, he we were working on something. He said, "Hey, I got this song. I, you want to just you know take a gander at the lyrics and, and just see what what you might can do with it and stuff." And I was like, "Well, sure." And it, it's that song. I was like, "Man, this is a really good song." And so we just we started playing with it a little bit, and it just it just really hit it hit home. I know right. it did for me. I mean, I personally don't I don't have any kids, but I can think of I, countless times. Me, and, it reminded me of like me sitting around talking with my dad, and right. I mean okay. he's just swapping battle stories. <laughs> right, right. I mean, it just it just really kind of was like yeah, this one time I did this, or this one time. Yeah, somebody throw crap at me on stage. <laughs> <laughs> and, 
it, yeah, it reminds me of the, throwing throwing stuff on stage. It reminds me of that that scene from the Blues Brothers when they were singing at the country <laughs> bar behind the behind the chicken wire. But oh, no, it's just the, it's, it's the way you sing it, man. Where when I heard it for the first time. And, and not knowing who wrote it, if somebody, man, you sing it with such, with such emotion, it's like you're singing, you have a little boy, and you're trying to, trying to you're telling them your story, man, you make it work, and, and, and the listeners even say it, when they hear the song, man, that's what makes it special, and I'm listening to it, and I'm like, wow, man, maybe this guy was really in jail and got into all this trouble, and he was younger, because, you know, oh, well, he's making it sound that way, you, you sing it with such emotion. Well, the thing, like I said, it's I personally didn't write the song, but it's a very, very true story. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I've, I've been there and done it, you know. It really did. It, it just hit close to home. It was... And on know, that note... Up down more than a time or two, yeah. yeah. Well, I've yeah. done that. And right now, the Ice Man's going to play I Wasn't No Angel. And this is the song we're talking about. This is Blake Anderson. Number one song this past week on the Ice Man Top 40. You want to count down. By my young son Dad, what were you like When you were my age I think back to my troubled years Memory lane is paved with tears Something in his eyes tell me He ain't letting this go with the Iceman right now, interviews with the Iceman. I tell you, tell you what, Blake, when, when that song became the morning, you know, what I did was I was posting it. There was a picture I saw online on your page that I wanted to use, and it was you and your father, Dick. 
And, and that kind yeah. of summed up the, the what I wanted to use. And you, I know you saw the picture. If you tell me a little about it and where was it at? Man, we uh, we actually played the uh, that day. We were at the Crawfish Festival in Old Town Spring. Uh, we were uh, one of the acts that uh, headlined, or not headlined, uh, Charlie Daniels headlined it. Uh, we were one of the opening acts. And it, it was really cool. This uh, A friend of mine just walked up and said, hey, let me get you a picture real quick. And, and it, it just kind of worked out. We just both kind of like walked up real quick, stood there, and it just, that was funny. The picture just worked. Yeah, it did. I seen it, it did. I, I was like, man, that's a, that's a good picture. I was, I was shocked you put it on the website. I was like, oh, man. Well, <laughs> what I did was, I, you know, I wanted to post and get it on my website, you know, for the number one song. And, and I'm looking, and I saw a few, and I'm like, man, this is cool. You know, because I know not only your father, um, but, but your mother, Chrissy, man, has just, she, every time I do the countdown or have the show and she knows you're on, man, it's just such support. I just, you know, I saw the picture with your father, and I, she mentioned it a lot, and I said, you know what, this, this is just a great picture to post with the number one, you know, for the number one post, but also your mother, man, because I got to say it, also everybody say your mother's your biggest fan, you know, they say that about me, but I got to send her a check every month to be my biggest fan, but your mother, man. <laughs> you got to pay mine a little bit. Yeah, no, nah, I don't think so, man. She She's a big, big supporter. Even before us starting the interview, she's, she's actually on my page on Facebook. Oh, I used to be, when, when can I hear it? When can I hear it? <laughs> but uh, she's, she's amazing, man, and it just seems like, you know, the support is, is, is the support around you is just great. And oh, I'm going to get down there because she, she's always cooking, man. And I used to going to have to come down there and have some food with you guys soon. <laughs> uh, absolutely, man. You ought to come try some of it. <laughs> Get a little of that ch southern chicken fried. <laughs> right. Now, I have another song that I play on my show, my kick-ass country show. It's upbeat. It's a totally 180 from, from I Wasn't No Angel. <laughs> and, well, tell, yeah. me, tell me a little about it. I mean, was it, was it a, you know, G-string is the name of the song. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I got the idea. I was at a uh, Roger Crager concert. <laughs> And he's just playing. I, I was going to college. I was in Huntsville at Sam Houston. And I'm watching the concert. Well, he was playing. And he busted his G string. And, like, you know, not everybody catches on to, like, I can see what string popped. I knew which one it was. I was like, man, he just busted his G string. And then I was, I, somebody was like, oh, that, what? I'm like, no, that's a string he just busted. And then somebody else came out and gave him a new guitar, like, no big deal. But it made me think, well, wait, that's G string. Well, well, some guys wear G strings too. I mean, I like mine. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> you know, it, it made me think of it. And I was, I was sitting down, I was like, man, there's a song in there with the G string, and nobody's done it. Right. And it took me years to, like, because I had the idea. And it wasn't until my senior year in college, like, I've played guitar for I don't know how long. I took a guitar class kind of as a blow-off. Well, they had somebody come in, and they were explaining all the parts of the guitar. You know, it, it's, got a, it's got a head, it has a neck, it's got a body, it's got a heel, it's got, it's got a waist. And just, he kept going on and on. I was like, wait a minute, there's my song. He just told me how to a G-string, basically. So all the parts wow. of it just, it just kind of came together, and I was like, hey, this is, this is pretty cool. Right. And it's really it, comical. It, when I first really wrote it and I, I played it for my mom and dad, they're like, Blake, nobody's going to know what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. I told them, I said, well, it doesn't really matter. If, if people just, I don't care what they think it is, they leave it to the imagination. Well, you know, you know, Blake, the Iceman heard that song. I just learned something new. I'm going to tell you something, brother. I, Iceman thought you were talking about the G string, the one that I know about. So, see, I just learned something. But the song works, whether it's the G-string on the guitar or the G-string on the theme, the song works. Bro. It's a good song. And right now, hit G-string. Play it. Just try it.
Andy, I just learned something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man, it, it took me years I had that idea. I sat on it for like two years, and it finally, when it was all explained to me, because I didn't know all those parts had names. <laughs> when they got told to me, I was like, oh, wow. Here we go. All right, that's G-String, the Iceman. Blake Anderson in the studio interviews with the Iceman. So I learned something new about that song. I still can't believe it because when I when I hear it all the time, I just think of the other kind of G string. So I, I, I'm going to have to listen to that song when I play it on the show. I'm going to have to have a different point of view about it. But <laughs> Blake, when did you start singing? Oh man, uh, well I guess I, I started when I was a little kid. I can't say I was any good. I still can't say I'm any good, but. Uh, it kind of works. I mean, I my father played when I was a kid. Uh, you know, I, I grew up in, in the whole music thing. And, I mean, when I was a little kid, I had more instruments than I knew what to do with. I couldn't figure them out, so I just kind of, I had, I had more important stuff to do, you know. Had girls to impress on my bicycle and whatnot. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine that with the G-String song. I, I believe on Facebook I see that, that you are. With somebody I did, in a relationship with Kimberly? Yes, I am. How long have you guys been together? Uh, a little over a year. I, as far as, you know, of course, having the support there and everything. I mean, it, it seems like that she, when you do a show, like I know you today, you're actually uh, at the Swamp Shack. Does she go with, to all the, uh, the concerts and events that you do? If she does. Uh, I mean, she goes, God, somehow, some way, she will get there. Right. And it, it's really nice having that kind of support behind me. It, it just, it really, because at, at the very least, if I'm at a place I've never played, I've, I've never been somewhere, I can always look out in the crowd and see that one face. There you go. That just kind of puts me back, like it puts me in my little zone. Yeah. And, and it, it's, yeah. I, I don't even have the words for that one. There you go. It's great to have the support, not only from the family, but somebody like that, like you said. You know, that, that you can look at, and, and like you said, you're on the stage, and somewhere you haven't played before, you got that one familiar face, and, and there you go. It's like you're just singing to them. Everybody always thinks it's all, like, fun, and it's all, like, this glory of being on stage and all that stuff. Which, yeah, it's fun. Don't get me wrong. And everybody's like, oh, you must be, you know, so lucky. And they don't know the other side of it. Like, she deals with more stuff for me than nobody put up with. Just with right. working on songs and, and just and trying to get out there and play, it's like, uh, I don't have time. I, I can't uh, I can't always make plans. Like, we try to have a date night every week, and some weeks it works, some it doesn't. I saw but today, I though. You, you, always right there. Today you squeezed in a little meal at my, one of my favorite places in the world, and too bad it's not one near me at Bubba Gump's. Uh-huh. <laughs> oh, yeah. I, I only, you should be I only jealous. Get... It was good. Yeah, no, I only get to, when I get down to Florida to Disney with my daughter, we always make it a point to get to Bubba Gumps and Universal, and outside of that, there is none near the Iceman, so I envy you guys. Uh, what, 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 do you, what do you eat when you, when you go there? Bubba Gump, the, the bucket of, the boys, a bucket of junk, is that the name of it? The boat trash? It's everything, yeah, it's everything thrown in that big bucket, and you just go to town on it. But I gotta get a couple yeah. of those, though, Iceman's not a little guy. <laughs> That's literally what I just got too. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Some shrimp, some fish, man. Some fish yep. fries. Yep. yep, that's it. Home. That's it, man. I love that place. Let me let me ask you. When you were you were younger, um, who did you look up to? What what musician when you were smaller? Or, you know, even when you decided you were going to get into music, who was the musician, country or whoever that you heard that said, you know what? I'm gonna, I'm going to make this work. I'm I'm going to get into this business. Oh, man. It's a, it'd be a shorter of a list of who didn't I look up to. Right. Uh, but, you know, I, I I really, I grew up on, like, Elvis Presley, uh, Marty Robin, uh, Stevie Ray Vaughan. I always like his stuff. Uh, Hank Williams Jr., Senior, mm-hmm. even three. I always liked all the Hanks. And it's cool because they all got their own little style about them. Yeah, they do. Especially when I play them, I love playing all three of them. And they, you know, you just wow, you, you hear that, and uh, you're absolutely right. Now, now let me keep on music. All right, you got your MP3 player. 
if the Iceman looked at MP3 player, knowing that you're in country and the type of music you do, what artist on there would I say, oh my God, Blake Anderson has this on his, on his MP3 player? I wouldn't imagine it. Oh, man. Uh, well, it's funny. I got, I got some Bruno Mars on there. Ooh, no, all right. Uh, I've got, man, I've got Bill Watson on there. I've got Steve Warner, uh, Jason Bolin, Roger Crager, Pat Green, mm-hmm. Corey Morrow, uh, Earl Thomas Conley, who I've been really stuck on lately. Now, if I, if I see a Bieber song on there, that's an accident, right? You hit the, you went yeah, to yeah. download something else and you hit that by accident, right? Right, that's right. I hit the wrong button. All right. I was just going to say, I don't, I don't reckon any of that would be on there, but. No, uh, good, good. Is, well, we, we, call it, we call it an accident if it is. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> right now, Iceman got play Dead and Gone, Blake Anderson. Interviews with the Iceman. Here, Blake. I appreciate it through your busy schedule. I know you got a lot going on, and uh, oh, I just man, appreciate just, you honored. coming in. No, I just man, appreciate you coming in because it's all about getting the name of you great new artists out there and, and making it happen, man. It's a passion of mine because I know the hard work you guys put in and, and everything you've got going on. And like I said, I appreciate the, the time in your busy schedule today to come in. Tell me and the listeners, what's in your future? 
Are you back in the studio soon? Are you, are you going to maybe go out on the road a little more? What, what do you got going on? Uh, really, I kind of got a mixture of both. Um, I've got uh, me and uh, my co-writer, we're, uh, we're working on a couple of new songs right now. I'm really excited about well, all of them, but a couple in particular. One, I'm hoping to be able to release uh, in about the next month. Kind of like a fun little summertime song. I, I'm really hoping we get it out and get it done. And at the same time, I'm working on a, I've got a handful of things lined out to go from here to Arkansas, uh, working on a few in New Mexico, working on Louisiana, and trying to get to Nashville. Right. And, and you know that, you know, with the top 40, the Iceman giving somebody a chance. As long as you make the top 10 in the next few weeks, man, we're going to pick a lucky winner and uh, give a slot at CMA Fest. But even if that doesn't pan out for you, man, I, I see big things ahead of you. I, like I said, from the minute you sent me the song and I got it, and I, and I get hundreds of songs a week, you know, it doesn't happen a lot. It, it happens where you hear a song and, and you just, like I said, just to go back to I Wasn't No Angel, and when I heard the song, man, it's you just sing it with so much emotion. I Like I said, I thought your little boy was sitting on your leg and you were, had the guitar in your hand and you just sang it. That was really, that was the, the uh, goal behind the song. And when, uh, when my co-writer, my friend Justin, when he, when he gave it to me, I was like, because he had, he had a uh, demo version of it, but I, I kind of had to, it wasn't working for me personally. Uh, just playing it Swamp Shack, actually, man. <laughs> oh, what's up, man? I'm on a radio interview. <laughs> it's all good, man. Y'all have a good day. Sorry. No, man, see, these the fans, though. There you go, baby. Interviewing <laughs> with me, and you got to, you know what? That's the most important thing, Blake, and, and that's cool, because... You know, you're on the interview, but you got you got the fans and you got the people, and you know people remember that. You know what I mean? I you say hi, hey, in the middle of an interview, you just gotta say hi to them, man. Those are your fans, baby. <laughs> I I always try to make it a point. I, I always give everybody the chance. I, I I I've never been one like I'll stay late to shows. I don't really care. You right. know, when it comes down to it, if it wasn't for the fans, it, I wouldn't be anywhere. Period. Right. And so, right. you know, I always, always make it a point to give them whatever they want. They want they want to hang out and talk for a minute, cool. They want an autograph, they want this, they want that, fine. You know, mm -hmm. it's that's the that's the whole point of it. It it's the fans that make everybody. It's not it's not just a song, it's getting people to believe in something. Right. Exactly. Oh. Funny story today too. Well, not funny, but really cool. This this little boy, I was uh, we were playing wagon wheel, and this little boy was he was right up there, right up front by the stage, and he was singing. And I just it was a new one on me, but uh, I just I quit singing. I got my mic down. I gave him the mic, and I let him finish out the song. Wow, oh, that's awesome, man! And it was yeah, really see. cool. And his name is Cole, and Cole, if you happen to be listening. There's a shout out to you, buddy. There you go. And you know what, though, we're, we're going to get you a copy of this after, even after it is. And you know, you can get it over if Cole's anywhere. If he's listening, if he's a friend on Facebook, or you come across him, you let him know. And Cole, man, the Ice Man, give you a shout out too. It was great you did that. If you got a singing career, let make sure you send the Ice Man your music, bro. <laughs> but, but no, that's what it's all about. You know, that that's where you get it because you know you could have hundreds of fans in the audience, but if you reach out to that one fan like you did, man, man, they're gonna remember that their whole life. Exactly, and that's that's my favorite part of it. it it's just reaching a few people, especially kids. Like that's that's great, right? Because and you, you never know. Man. I may be calling him and asking him for a job one day. <laughs> that's right. Uh -huh. that, that's right. Yeah, I might be doing the same thing, man, so don't forget me. <laughs> but I appreciate Hey, right now, we're going to play another one of your songs, man. This, this, one, this one's called Drag Your Feet, John. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's true story. <laughs> All right, well, you know what? Before we play it, why don't you segue in? you got to let me know a little about that song. Well, you know, it's a long story, but let, let me... Uh, Give you the short version. All right. Okay, I, I had a girlfriend. We broke up. She got with this guy named Johnny. <laughs> okay. Well, we hadn't seen each other for a couple of years. 
we just uh, happened to see each other at a place. Well, she broke up with him to get back with me, and I was talking with her parents, and her dad always called him Drag Your Feet Johnny. I mean, he just <laughs> he was slow about everything. He spent about 10 years in school for an associate's degree. I mean, wow. Okay, so, 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 you're, so you're saying his three toughest years of school was third grade? Pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> that line just stuck with me. One day I just... I sat down and I was like, oh, this is going to be kind of cool, and I'm going to make it like a little line dance song. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> that's cool. Well, well, one of these days, he's going to hear it. He ain't going to be real forked up on it. But well, he's not getting your royalties either. That's it. You could say it's about my cousin, Johnny. We can, we, we got your back there. We can cover you. Right now, this is Drag Your Feet, Johnny. Blake Anderson and the Iceman. <laughs> Man with Blake Anderson, man, honored and excited. The number one song on the top 40 this past week, I Wasn't No Angel, giving us a little of his time. And, uh, you know, Iceman once again appreciates it. Is there anything you want to, you know, let the fans or the Iceman fans know before 
I know I'm going to let you go. Any, you know, anything coming up other than what you spoke about or any upcoming shows in the next week or so you want to you wanna let, the, let the listeners know about? Well, let's see. This next week, um, actually this next week I took off in particular. Um, I should be uh, in the, uh, the 17th. I will be at a crawfish festival in uh, Freeport, which ought to be a fun deal. Uh, after that, I'm actually playing at Penrith Barbecue, which has been on the food the food channel. Wow, okay. And it's a really cool place. It's definitely uh, one worth checking out. If you ever get down here, you got to make sure to stop at Penrith Barbecue. But I tell you, I'm going to stop at Christy Anderson's Barbecue. That's the barbecue I'm going to stop at if I get down there, because I always see that post, the crawfish and everything. Uh, I swear, that's going to make a point of it. <laughs> but, We're but going I, down I, there, and I'll, uh, maybe I'll get you a beer. There you go, baby. There you go. I appreciate it, Blake. And uh, I'll tell you what, give my love to your parents, man. They're great people. I had some interface with them. You know, I think you got a big future. You keep up the hard work, brother. And I look forward to playing you on the Iceman shows and everything we got going on. I do appreciate it. Yeah, absolutely, Iceman. Thank you very much. They, they, hey, tell they, everybody, you. don't forget to vote. That's right. Get out there and vote. Because, you know, even if this is it after the show, it's coming up, he's always going to be on there. Right now, we're going to end it. This is our kind of day. Iceman and Blake Anderson. Blake, I appreciate it, buddy. You have a good one. Absolutely, man. You do the same.
let's open the lid on some more of it. Extra. With the Iceman doing it, Iceman style.